Hey guys, coming up in this video, we're going to be looking at this battery by DIY Pow. Now this is in the 48 volt class of battery or 51.2 volt nominal, which means that there is 16 cells in series. This battery can be used in a golf cart. You can also use this in an off-grid system. So let's take a look at the battery. Now I know in my golf cart, in between the rails where the battery holds is about 10 and a quarter inches. So let's have a look and see if we in fact have 10 and a quarter to fit inside a typical golf cart battery carriage. And we have 10 and a quarter. This will fit inside my battery carriage. We also have a height of nine inches or nine and a half to the top of the terminal posts. And we also have a length of 19 and three eighths. Now the weight of the battery, I don't actually have a scale. Let me see if I can find a scale. Okay, I'm gonna put some of these foam pads down. It's gonna be a little difficult to try and see the battery weight. And we have 83 pounds. So you can, oh, not sure if the camera caught it, but I had 83 pounds. And on the top of the battery, we have lithium ion battery. I've explained in other videos that lithium ion doesn't necessarily mean NMC. We have a nominal voltage of 51.2. We have an overcharging voltage of 58.4. Maximum charge current of 50 amps. Energy, 5,120 watt hour. We have a capacity of 100 amp hours. Over discharge voltage, 40 volts. Maximum discharge current, 100 amps. And a cycle life of 100% death of discharge 2,000 times. And on the front of the battery, we have DIY POW, the nominal voltage, 100 amp hours, lithium iron phosphate, LiPo 4, and we also have a Bluetooth logo. And on the side of the battery, we have our warning labels. Now in preparation for this video, I have already fully charged this battery. So as you can see on the app here, we have 100% state of charge, 54.6 uh, volts and 100 amp hours. We're in standby condition and perfect health. And other things of note we can see here, we have our voltage meter and a current meter. We also have the temperature of the battery. It's been cycled one time. And you can see here on the cell voltages, we actually have a over voltage alert. It looks like cell number 14 hit high voltage, so it shut down the charging. It did shut it down at 3.65 volts, which is the top end of lithium iron phosphate. And you can see that cell number five is dragging pretty far behind. So we're gonna do a discharge test and see if we can in fact get full 100 amp hours out of this battery. So I have my test rig set up and you can see we're actually less than 40 volts because I haven't turned my breaker on yet. So we're not actually picking up the full voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discharge this battery through this inverter and I'm going to charge these two 24 volt batteries that are in parallel because I want to series these back up to a 48 volt and I have them in balance right now because I was playing with the lie time battery or sorry, lit time. It's pronounced lit time, L I is in little. So lit time battery. Okay, so I'm ready to begin the test. Let's pre-charge the capacitors. You can see there instantly the voltage has jumped up. And I can turn my breaker on. And we'll turn the inverter on. Let the inverter come up to its 120 volts AC. And plug the charger in. We'll plug in our load. Okay, and I'm maxed out on that charger. We're discharging at about five amps, six amps. So I'm gonna bring my bench power supply into this as well, because I wanna charge this faster. Okay, we are now discharging at roughly eight amps. So once these two batteries come up to full, I'll reconfigure everything so I have more of a deeper discharge. Uh, for now, I just wanna balance out these two batteries. So I'll be back later on when the discharge test is complete. And the discharge test is complete. We have 104.609 amp hours out of this 100 amp hour battery. 
So we pass the capacity test. Next, I'm gonna open it up very carefully. I was going to install it into my cart and drive it around first before opening it, but it's rainy, mucky outside. So I'm gonna do the opening now very carefully and hope that I don't wreck it and I can use it in the golf cart to show you all what it looks like in use in a golf cart. And this one was a pain to open, which is a good sign. So right away, I can see a BMS. And as I can see on the BMS, we have a DS11V1. And we have these pieces of neoprene foam and looks like you can see the indent from the lid. So this was putting pressure down, keeping this BMS where it's supposed to be. And underneath here, we have what looks to be some ring terminals. So we have the B minus over here and the P minus is gonna be on this side. Looks like we have a switch slash LED port that is not being utilized, which they could put some sort of uh, light on here. We also have a, looks like RS485232 slash CAN port. We have our balance lead cables here and here, and what looks to be the temperature sensor right here. And that temperature sensor looks like it goes down into the battery. Okay, I'm gonna interject here for a second. So I noticed during post editing that I did not test the cold temperature sensor for cold temperature protection. This is the original connection that runs down into the battery cells. So I do not wanna pull those out and move them from their location. So I've wired in my own two temperature sensors, which is gonna give me the same readout. So you can see we are charging. Now let's just cover one of these sensors. Okay, covering one doesn't seem to be disconnected. Oh, there we go, just before I stopped. Okay, so we have temperature sensor, we'll say one is working, and I'll test the other one here. Give it a few minutes. And temperature sensor number two works. And just while we're here, let's try high temperature. And we've disconnected. Cool this down. And temperature sensor number two. And we've disconnected. So both temperature sensors that are internal inside of the battery do high and low temperature protection. Now back to our regular scheduled programming. So on the lid, you can see we have our terminal posts and we have a pair of eight gauge wire on the negative and we have a single six gauge conductor on the positive. Now as far as getting this pack out, it looks to be pretty well sandwiched into the case. I'm not sure how far I wanna dig into this. Feel the side of the cells. So the top of the cells are here. Let me play around a little bit and I'm gonna see if I actually wanna pull this out because this is over 80 pounds. So it's gonna be rather difficult to try and maneuver it out safely. So I may actually just wrap it up here without actually pulling these out. Oh, this is kinda of cool. I haven't seen this before. So off of one of the posts, we have the screw. We have a serrated washer here. Never seen a serrated washer before. Well, I think I am defeated. So, I'm gonna call it a win for this battery. I can almost get it right to the edge, but I can't get in there, holding it upside down, shaking it. I'm worried. Yeah, it's not coming out. So unfortunately, unless I cut this open, I'm not gonna be able to see what type of cells they are or how the bus bars are configured. I mean, it passed the capacity test and everything looks perfect. So I don't doubt that they're using grade A cells. I would just love to know what type they're using. But this battery has defeated me. It's too hard to try and shake this out and not losing it. Well. I'm gonna call it quits on trying to fully dismantle this. It's not gonna happen. 
but I'm gonna fully charge this back up and in another video, I'm gonna use this in my golf cart to see if it can take the high current. Stay tuned for that. Check out the links below. I'll leave links to this battery and as well as their official website, they have 12 volt 24. So check them out. I'll leave links in the description below and uh, thanks for watching this video. Bye.